SSL HTTPS series today. A talk by Johan and Nils about resize for enabling HTTPS. And uh, on the client side, it's quite easy. I change HTTP to HTTPS and everything is done, but I think that the tricky things happen on the server side. And this is what this talk is about. Johan. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so Nils and I are software architects. We are developers, uh, in essentially. Um, and um, uh, Thomas, on the other hand, uh, who cannot be here, is a, is a cryptographer. Uh, now, in a way, it's quite apt that uh, Thomas isn't here because our talk today is very much about how you can set up, uh, how you should go about setting up a secure web server without too much access to cryptographers. So we're going to uh, look at the DevOps approach to uh, setting up HTTPS. So where, what is our starting point? Um, well, I think that HTTPS is hard to set up and it's hard to maintain. So I think that we should uh, prepare a talk on that for um, all of us. Don't you think so, Nelis? Um, when we started this, um, we thought it, it, uh, it would be simple. Um, just enabling it, um, actually it, some time ago. But this year, uh, a, a lot of um, problems appeared with HTTPS. Um, to illustrate this, we, um, we put a, a, a list of known problems with HTTPS on the slide. I'm not going to, into detail of all of them, but just to illustrate to you um, that there are a lot of them. Some of the, them have, have been mentioned in the previous talk or in the, um, uh, the talk uh, just after the break. Um, and one important thing you can observe here is the dates we put there, is the dates uh, when there, uh, there was an advice to try and prevent it. It's not always the date it has been discovered, sometimes it has been discovered before that as a theoretical attack, but then it was on these dates it has been considered to be practical, so that we have to do something against it. And you can see in the, in the last year there are um, uh, five more things that appeared to be a problem, uh, where you have to try and configure your server uh, against uh, that. Um, this is not the only problems there are uh, with HTTPS, but these are the ones that you could do some server configuration for. Um, and this is an illustration that setting up HTTPS right is, is harder than you would uh, expect. Um, and because of the, the, a lot of them appeared this year, uh, it's changing faster um, than we would expect. Um, and this made us realize that we cannot just use SSL anymore. We have to configure it correctly. And the question is, are our operations sufficiently agile to, to uh, follow on this fast changing pace? To see what the uh, current uh, state is, uh, we look to the SSL Pulse report of the second of August uh, this year. SSL Pulse does a scan of HTTPS servers to see what ciphers they support and what kind of protocol or problems appear. And we put some numbers on the slide um, to show that there's poor deployment of known uh, mitigations against these uh, problems. Um, I'm going to take two examples, for example, SSL 2.0 who is known to be insecure for several years already, um, nearly one-third of the service still supports it. Um, another example, TLS 1.2, who is the only one who has really secure ciphers, uh, looking to the table uh, on the previous slide. Uh, five years after it has been released, more than 80% doesn't support it yet. Uh, so this shows that the known mitigations are not always deployed in practice. Um, and this was our uh, motivation to, um, to state that we need a systematic approach uh, for this. We need a systematic approach to set up HTTPS correctly that has several proper properties. It must be repeatable, so not just logging in on the server, changing something by hand and logging out again. No, it must be easy to, uh, to repeat. It must uh, capture uh, your knowledge and allow for sharing this knowledge. It must allow to 
uh, agility to react on changing advice if the pace uh, does increase or there's new uh, tips on how to set up. And it must uh, simplify assurance and verification of this. And we found uh, these properties in uh, DevOps. Um, DevOps is a, a convergence between development and IT operations, uh, where uh, practices of agile development are applied on uh, operations. And one of the key concepts is that you um, that you uh, see your uh, IT operations, the setup of the server, you capture it in code. Um, and because it is captured in code, um, you have a repeatable setup. Everything is captured in code and automated. Uh, in recipes, um, in languages like CF Engine, Puppet, or Chef, uh, these are example languages. We're going to use Puppet in this presentation. Um, it allows for knowledge capturing and sharing uh, because the code you have or the recipes in these languages, they provide you with an up-to-date documentation how the setup is done. Uh, you can build on existing modules that you uh, find on the internet um, and sharing knowledge. And it provides you with an abstraction because it's in the recipes. Not every sysadmin or developer who uses this uh, needs to know all the details and doesn't have, does have to be a crypt cryptographer. It allows, to, uh, uh, it allows agility to react on changing advice because it shortens your release cycles. Everything is automated. It's very easy to do small changes and release them fast. Um, and it provides you with uh, some assurance and allow for verification because everything is in source control for traceability and it's very easy to replicate an environment to do testing and verification on. Um, more concrete uh, in this talk uh, or in the, the demos a bit further on we're going to use Puppet. Um, I'm going to try to explain you the basic concepts uh, using an example. Um, the example is I want to set up a server with uh, Nginx, a specific version, um, 1.4.2, with SSL enables and some specific cipher selection to select some secure ciphers. What do I need to do in Puppet? Um, I want to apply it on a bunch of servers. Uh, in Puppet, you're, if you want to um, describe or set up a server, you describe the desired state you want the server to be in. It's not a script uh, per se, it's not a set of steps to bring it to there, but you describe a desired state, so a de declarative description in manifests or recipes. And you do this using resource abstractions. I put three examples on the slides. In this example, if uh, um, the package resource abstraction is used, to say this piece of software must be installed on the system. For example, Nginx 1.4.2. The file uh, resource abstraction is used to say, uh, for example, this Nginx configuration file must be present on the system, and it must have this con uh, content. And the service resource abstraction is used uh, to describe um, that the service Nginx must be running, um, and must be still be running after restart. Let me switch to uh, uh, the actual uh, Puppet file to show you how it more or less looks. The details are not so important, it's just to illustrate how this is described. So the package resource abstraction uh, says there must be an Nginx with a specific version. The version here is a variable, it's filled in somewhere else. Uh, a file resource abstraction to state that an Nginx configuration file must be present, that it's, it's constructed the content from a certain template. Um, this is this file. It's just a normal Nginx configuration where certain values are filled in uh, from the uh, Puppet uh, content. And then I have a, a service resource abstraction that says the Nginx service must be started. This is more or less how you, uh, in a declarative way, um, describe your uh, server setup. Um, as part of this talk, we're going to demonstrate uh, the stuff we do. So everything um, we 
we show here or we talk about, uh, we made examples for, and, uh, and they are available on the Git repository. I'm going to show the URL uh, a little bit later on. So you can try it out yourself. It's a rather easy setup, so it's easy to experiment with. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you um, before I do a puppet run is that Nginx is not available. Um, and that there is no web server running on this machine. Not on HTTP, not on HTTPS. Um, a bit bigger. It's better. Um, I'm going to start uh, running Puppet now. Um, what Puppet will do is it will take my description of the system um, and compare it with the current state. And if it sees things are different, it will start changing it to bring it in, uh, in uh, the state I want it to be. Um, I put a, a Puppet command in a script because it's rather complex to type it in in the, in the demo. Um, this takes a while because internet is access is slow here, but I can show you what the output is. Um, because I did it just before the, the talk, and it will tell you I changed these things to the system. I added an app repository, it's somewhere in my script, it has to be added for a specific Nginx version. It uh, uses this file. Uh, resources to ensure um, that the correct files are on the system. It installs Nginx for a specific version and it will uh, ensure that the Nginx service is running. I think by now it will have finished. Nearly. Um, if I run it again, so it has the same output, if I run it again, nothing will be changed because the system is already in that state. If I would remove one file or stop something, um, something would change. And I can show you now that Nginx is indeed running. Um, and if I do a, a request on HTTPS, it's set up and configured to everything. This is just to demonstrate the basics uh, set up with uh, Puppet. Um, the next uh, topic is how to configure your, uh, uh, your cipher list, which is going to be uh, done by uh, Johan. Ah, no, first the versions. Yes. Um, so, uh, let, let's have a look at the server. Is this on? Can you hear me? Um, so let's have a look at the versions, that, or, or rather the machine that uh, Nelis has been interacting with. Um, so we, we um, setting up a mission critical uh, machine here. Uh, my reflex, I don't know about you, would be to try to take a long-term supported version. So in our case, we opted for Ubuntu Server 12.04. Um, one of the reasons, obviously, to take a LTS version is because of the security patches. Now, it turns out that if you do that, there are a number of problems. And the first one is that the um, packages, the binary packages that are uh, available in official um, repositories do not support TLS 1.2. So uh, in further talk, it will transpire that that's actually quite important. Um, then. OpenSSL that is available for uh, Ubuntu uh, doesn't actually support GCN. Again, it turns out that uh, support for GCN is quite important. If you look at Ruby, um, then um, if you go below patch level 247, then uh, it suffers from hostname check bypassing. Uh, so what are we to do? Now, being rather simple-minded, we uh, thought we'd compile from source and install. But hang on, 
doesn't that mean that we've just blown all the warranties, all the supposed benefits of using an LTS version? So I'm, I'm not sure that this is the best solution. Um, but then maybe there aren't any good solutions anyway. Um, interesting topic to, to talk about um, later on maybe. Okay, so what I would like to do now um, is to drill a bit deeper into the configuration of uh, Nginx. Um, and um, as an introduction, I, I want to repeat the list of um, uh, vulnerabilities that have been in the news recently um, and mm -hmm. point out that, it, uh, that the cipher list is going to address a number of these. So BEAST is going to be addressed by the cipher list, the correct configuration of a cipher list. Lucky 13, RSC, RC4 vulnerabilities, and forward secrecy. Um, now the other ones, uh, SSL stripping, um, let me see, crime and breach, uh, Nailis will cover in a, in a later uh, demonstration. Um, so let me get started by showing you what this cipher list actually is. Uh, this is tricky. Uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, hold this microphone and do the demo. Um, so I hope that people understand me without a microphone. It's not in the recording. Ah, OK. Uh, so how do I fit this? OK. Um, so let's have a look at the Nginx configuration file. Nginx, uh, Nginx conf. Um, so this is the configuration file. Uh, somewhere there is um, a cipher list. Here it is. Looks looks quite cute, right? Until, whoa! Look at that. That's all the cipher list. Um, now, this goes on and on. Um, so so this is quite turned out to be quite a complex thing. Um, before I, I tell you how we built it up, let me just explain uh, what it does. Um, do I have a mouse here? OK, here. Um, so a cipher list is actually a concatenation of cipher strings. And a cipher string can be the name of a cipher, like this one here. Um, and uh, but it can also be a um, specification of a cipher list of a of a sp it can be it can designate a, a cipher list itself. Uh, so, for example, this one here says all the ciphers that use this for encryption, and then the cipher strings can be modified. So, actually, this one says if you look at the complete string, it says not the uh, ciphers that have been in, uh, that use DES for, for encryption. Um, so uh, what we have done is we have uh, built up this cipher list modularly. Um, let me scroll up. We've taken the various vulnerabilities and we have made a um, separate cipher list that would mitigate for that specific vulnerability. And then we just concatenate here if we go uh, sorry, so here is the cipher list it, it concatenates all the individual um, mitigations. Um, and for each mitigation, we've actually tested this. We've used a technique that we uh, borrow from uh, development, that we practice in development too, um, namely TDD. Uh, the idea behind TDD is very simple. You um, start by writing a failing test. You demonstrate that it fails. Um, you then write some code that fixes the test. Uh, you refactor and you repeat. Um, so demonstrating this for uh, the beast um, vulnerabilities or actually let me first 
let me first show you um, the, the tests in action. So we use RSpec. Um, if we put in format documentation, then we're going to have nice output, um, and then we run a suite of tests uh, on the, the, the decipher list. Um, okay, so here it, it goes through the, the various tests, and, and at the moment, with the vanilla setup, they all pass. Um, now, I'm going to stop them passing by um, setting the, the cipher list so that they uh, allow every um, every cipher so this one here uh, so I have to run puppet again and if I then rerun the tests, surprise, surprise, they fail. Um, now, um, what I'm interested in at the moment is working with the beast attack. So I select that test. I go beast, e, minus E beast. Um, and of course, that, that fails. Uh, now, interestingly, the the test actually tells us the bit of cipher uh, list that we have to put in. And we've written our test so that it outputs the um, strings, the cipher strings <coughs> that have to be removed. Um, so that's what we do. Uh, that's, that's this one. That's this one here. You'll have to take my word for it. Uh, it's, it's rather a nuisance that we actually have to enumerate all the ciphers. Uh, we, we do not have a nice, um, concise um, expression of, of what the, the properties of these ciphers are. Um, obviously, what all these ciphers have in common is what we say in the tests, um, namely um, here, uh, the cipher spec mode has to be CBC and the protocol version has to be lower than TLS version 1.1. 1 .1. um, so, but, but OpenSSL does not allow you to specify it that, that cleanly. So the only option that you seem to have is to, to uh, list all the possible ciphers that are uh, actually uh, vulnerable to, to that attack. Um, so, uh, let me uh, show you that I can actually um, become uh, protected to the beast attack uh, by um, selecting a cipher list that um, appends the uh, impervious to beast string. Um, so, next thing I do is I run puppet again. And lo and behold, we are now um, safe for uh, against the beast attack. Um, OK, um, let's. Um, I, I could go through all of these, but I'm not going to do that because that's going, that would be rather boring. Um, let, let me just go back to a situation where, uh, where we were, to the situation where we were. So uh, that's this one. Um, and then, of course, if I run Puppet again, then all our tests will be, um, will, will, will be passing again. Now, th there is a problem with this. Um, 
and that's namely um, we now have so few ciphers that are supported uh, that in effect we do not have um, any ciphers anymore that can um, that are su supported by browsers as well um, so um, no browser can actually make use of the resources that are served by our web server. Um, let me show you. Um, so a little script that we wrote um, to extract the supported ciphers. Oh, damn, that didn't work. Sorry about that. Okay, here goes. So, ah, uh, people at the back of the room won't be able to see this, but uh, so so what this says, yeah, but it's too low to. Uh, so 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 what this says is that the accepted ciphers are all TLS version 1.2. They all use GCM mode, um, and and none of the browsers actually support any of them. Um, so, you know, our web server has become rather useless. So, we, 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 we sort of thought about that too, and we included uh, tests for compatibility, um, and um, if I run those, then indeed it tells me that I've got failing tests, uh, namely, um, uh, it only supports GCM, which we knew, and uh, it doesn't support Firefox and Chrome. And in fact, in this in this run, we've even um, disabled the tests for the Microsoft browsers because, you know. Uh, so, um, what what do we have to do in order to regain compatibility? Um, well, we don't really know. Um, but, um, uh, I mean, the obvious thing is uh, looking very hard at which browsers you have to support and then to select the least bad one. Um, so, um, we thought that, you know, a pretty good guess might be uh, this one. Um, so, elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman, ephemeral key exchange with RSA, blah, blah, blah. Um, it, it has RC4 as a, an encryption stream note. Um, but so let's let's try with that one, um, and um, uh, so we th this one has this compatibility string appended to it. And if we now run Puppet again, then our compatibility tests should pass. Okay, so now we have zero failures. Okay, so um, I think that Nelis, you're going to cover the order in which the cipher suites are um, covered uh, or, or offered because that's a that's a very important topic too. Um, so let's get important, back. Important also is that we now add the cipher suite that is not secure for one of the attacks, the RC4 attack. But we have to add it for compatibility. But the general agreement that we found on the internet is this, this is the least worst one to add back again. So that's why we added that one. Um, so I, I didn't cover that because of uh, a lack of time. Uh, I think that this one is yours, isn't it? Yeah. So next to the uh, cipher suites, we have to do uh, more configuration in Nginx to get everything right. Um, there's um, three more important things to do. Um, because of the compatibility uh, we had to add, um, we have add less safe cipher suites, so we have to encourage uh, in connections to use the safe ones first. And there's actually a property in both Apache and Nginx to do that, which is this one. Um, so you prefer the order of the cipher list as given by the server, not by the uh, by the client. I'm going to put it off just to show the tests. 
Uh, a second important configuration is uh, to prevent uh, SSL stripping, is to add a, a header, strict transport security, uh, that says to the uh, clients that if they reconnect to the server, they should always use a HTTPS connection. Uh, in this case, for the next year. Uh, it's a typical way of specifying that. You can disable this header. Um, and another one, it's not really a practical uh, fix for Breach. I don't know if you heard about it. Breach is a, a new attack on the Black Hat conference a few weeks ago. Um, uh, attacking the combination of uh, HTTPS and um, compression in HTTP. Uh, so we disabled it compression. I'll put it on just to show the test. Um, it's not really practical because in practice you can't make that for a high volume site to, to switch off compression. But there's no practical advice yet on how you should uh, do it then. Um, switching to the tests. Um, so you see, I made uh, three tests that are failing now. One to check for the, the two to check for the headers, the strict transport security, the HZIP header, and the one preferring the, the, the order of the ciphers. To test this, I, I, uh, I with OpenSSL S client, I connected uh, to the server and I changed the order of uh, uh, applying them. And in this case, because I switched it off, it uses the order that is given by the client and not the one uh, that is securely uh, supported. Um, so this is uh, showing how you, with using uh, um, Puppet, can do a, a safe configuration of, um, of your ciphers, of your uh, Nginx configuration. So I wanted to give a demo about uh, Vagrant as well, uh, but in the interest of time, I'm going to skip the demo. But I, I would like to, to just say that uh, in the course of developing um, the um, code, uh, Vagrant turned out to be very useful, uh, <coughs> turned out to be invaluable, actually. It, it is a very um, easy, clean way of rolling back a virtual machine that you are installing with your uh, DevOps scripts um, and then executing um, the, uh, the, the, the manifests, the, in our case, the puppet manifest. What we have also added to the, the Vagrant um, run is running the RSpec tests. So when um, the virtual machine comes up, it kind of self-tests. You, you see by the end of the um, by, by the end of the, the, the boot process, that the machine is indeed in the state that you want it to be, uh, or rather the way that you have specified it to be in, in your RSpec tests. Okay, uh, for conclusion, conclusions, we're gonna um, sh uh, talk about our experiences with this uh, briefly. Um, to sum up, is configuring HTTPS hard? Uh, I I think uh, we found it very hard. Um, one of the hard things is to, to get a, a, a good cipher list and specifying the cipher lists in, with OpenSSL in Nginx and Apache, it's the same way how we specify it, is rather fragile. I um, can give you a few examples of um, a cipher uh, lists we got from the internet. We put them in our configuration and then we started testing it and it didn't do what we expected because there was a, a typo in it and it, then it just falls back to the standard uh, configuration because there's an, a thing that is not, not identifiable by Nginx and then it puts an error in its log but it just starts up with the standard configuration. Uh, this kind of things uh, uh, happen. So it's very fragile, so it's very important to really uh, test it uh, thoroughly. Um, also, we were not really happy with the solution of having to uh, make our custom web server by building some stuff from source. Um, this is something that, that stays uh, hard. Um, it's a trade-off between having the latest security patches and having a, a long-term support version of your, of your uh, operating system. And I think we also showed that um, 
you have uh, little chance with one of manual uh, installation or configuration. Maybe once you will be able to get it right, but a month later there's a new security advice and you have to uh, redo the whole thing. And I think if you do it manually, you have little chance to get it correct uh, always. Did DevOps uh, help us with this? Uh, at least in our perspective it did, it did because it provides a systematic approach to tackle this um, um, with the correct properties. And especially it allows us for extensive testing and experimentation uh, by this automation. And I think uh, we try to demonstrate that. You change something, run a puppet, run a test, and you see if it's uh, still correct. Of course, there are some limitations with what we've uh, shown here and what you'll find on the GitHub uh, repository, because we only focused on, focused on getting HTTPS right, um, not the whole stack of web server setup. We didn't look to the other security properties. Um, we also didn't look to the added risk of adding Puppet to your configuration, because it's, uh, uh, it can be used for remote management of the service. It adds risk to, uh, we didn't look into that. And one important uh, thing is we, for testing for these attacks, we didn't directly test for the attacks. We didn't, for example, test if this is, uh, if you can do a breach attack on this. This is not what we test. We test on indirect properties of the attack. For example, we know that breach is bad uh, if CBC mode is enabled uh, in TLS below 1.1. Um, and that's where we test for. We test if these ciphers, uh, ciphers are available. Uh, beast. Yeah. Um, what do we want you to remember from this talk? Um, if you want to systematically set up HTTPS rights on your servers, you could use uh, DevOps for this and by, uh, by coding your infrastructure and doing extensive testing. Um, that was it. We're ready for some questions. Johannelis, thank you very, very, very much for this uh, user-friendly introduction to the cipher hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a mess. Eh? If you're looking for a, a cipher which is supported by most of the browsers, which is not vulnerable against Beast, and you try to avoid RC4, you're in the empty set. Mm. Yeah. And we need more browsers supporting TLS 1.2. Zero. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so the question is, who can tell me what ciphers I should use? Um, our answer is, not us. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, if Thomas, if Thomas had been here, then, then you know, he would be qualified to speak uh, on that uh, as a cryptographer. We are not cryptographers, but our message is, um, you know, go and get the best advice possible, and then capture that advice in scripts, capture that advice in um, code that will set up your service rather than, than you know, redoing it manually. Uh, and, and if you collect all of the advice, so, but the problem is there's no little authoritative sources, it's all blog posts. There's a blog post here for this, there's a blog post there for that, and they all give you advice on your cipher selection string, and they are all different. Um, that's why we split our cipher selection string in several parts, in subparts for each of the things, and we made individual tests for them to try and simplify that for us. So we, we also did all what you described, follow all the links of the blog posts, and made individual cipher substrings for that and added them together. Yeah. And because we have a cryptographer uh, in our team who made this, we feel a bit confident that it's okay, but that's it. We also run the SSL labs a test against it, and it was quite positive. 
But what else can we do? Um, we, we didn't do any systematic, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, so the question was, uh, do we know about timetables uh, in which the major browsers will make the um, newer, more, um, um, more impenetrable ciphers available? Um, the, the, the answer again, I'm afraid, is no. Um, I'm not sure that there are such timetables either. I just uh, have heard anecdotally that uh, Chrome would be supporting um, TLS 1.2 GCM mode soonish. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know, Nelis, do you do no. you know any more about it? I know that for a while the browser said the servers are not supporting it. So we're, why should we support it and the other way around? So that's one of the reasons why it probably is not supported yet. But Maybe I have a remark to this topic. Um, the, um, at least the Wikipedia article about TLS from last Monday has a <laughs> nice overview about the supported uh, ciphers in the current browsers and beta versions. I hope they maintain this list carefully and also in the future. Further questions? Um, why did we select Puppet? Be um, because we knew it from other uh, projects and I've used it in, in practice in, in several things already. Um, I know the other options but I've, I've not used them in practice so it's not specifically. Our message is not you should use Puppet, our message is you should use DevOps. Um, I think Chef is also a viable alternative. Uh, see if Engine is a little bit older. There's a newer language, SALT, um, but I think they are all a bit in the same uh, nature. No? Yeah, thank you very much. We have now the lunch break and we'll